this for you. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Jaden and welcome to Designs Academy. Today, tutorial is going to be on Lightroom. Now, I made a Lightroom tutorial two months ago. It was HDRI lighting, and that was a complete different tutorial. That was using um, GI. Today, we'll be using general lights, and this is going to be a little bit more simple, but these can make a whole bigger difference if you know how to use them correctly. So I'm going to give you a small little tutorial on how to use these correctly and know what they're for, kind of. Uh, I got a couple different things to show you today, so this is going to be pretty cool. There's a bunch of different lighting options in Cinema 4D, so I'm going to start off with showing you the basic first, and then I'll show you something that gets a little bit better, and you know, it just you just kind of progress on with light setups and whatnot. So yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so right now you guys are looking at a render that I made. Uh, it's a very basic, obviously, no, no like insane materials or nothing in the background, it's just a text. But it looks clean and it looks nice. I have a little bit of reflection. I have a, for now going on with the ma uh, material that I made, it was a quick material, it's not anything special. And this is uh, altogether a really crappy material, but it was just for the Lightroom uh, showcase. So, yeah. Um, so we're gonna start with these lights. So if you look over here, I haven't organized these yet because there's no point, I was gonna leave them anyway. But if I get out of this camera, you can see that there's around uh, there's easily like 16 lights, 16 to 17 lights over here. So like, yeah, it's about six, it's just about 17 lights. Um, I mean, every single light makes a difference in Cinema 4D, no matter how bright or what color it is. Uh, I can teach you guys so much stuff about lights, it's not even funny. There's so many different rendering engines and lights and stuff in Cinema 4D alone. There's Octane, V-Ray, this lighting engine, there's so many of them, I could go on. And to be honest with you, it's all overrated, but you still get the better render. Um, basically rendering, even the field of photography, the lighting is like the main thing of your picture. It's not the lens, it's not the camera you have, but it's the lighting. And I mean, I learned that, you know, being a photographer and all, and I learned that being a 3D graphic designer as well, because this, without lighting, you're, you don't have shadows. Without lighting, you don't have a specific ratio type for your shutter. Without lighting, your ISO doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's just a bunch of different things you have to consider. And when making lights for motion design, cameras come into the same thing, because if you have a physical camera on, I mean, it's a whole different story. Because turn movie camera on, you can mess with ISO, exposure, gain, shutter, vignette, lens uh, distortion. I mean, it goes on. It's not even, it's not a joke. Anyway, back to the point. Um, I don't know why that, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we got all these lights and you got the great, you got that great, uh, like, you know, the, the result you're looking for. But there's never a light room that is just specific, you know, like, Every single light room serves a different purpose. So when you look at a um, when you look at a render that you're making, it's not a great idea to use pre-made light rooms because every single time you make a material or something that's just you know, it's different. Usually you want to have a, a light room accustomed to that one render. It's a lot more work, but you get the better product. And I have no problem with using presets for light rooms. A lot of people do it. It's just better looking if you make it exactly for that, especially when it comes to materials, because materials and lights are hand in hand with each other. So that's another thing to consider when doing that. But right now, we're going to go in a render settings and we're going to check these out. So for output, I have a basic 4K rendering going on, 38040 by 2160. Uh, we got 300 DPI, even though it doesn't really mean anything, and that's all I have over here. I go to anti, whatever that word is, I still don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, if you want to change it from geometry to best, and set max level to 2. And I'm going to put this to 15 really quick. And then I'm done over here. I'm going to go to ambient. I'm going to go to o AC. AC, the big AC. I don't really mess with these settings yet. I'm still trying to learn about these. Uh, I've been learning lights, and I never actually learned about the settings, but I never really occurred to me because I always look good no matter what. But I'm sure there's something in here that makes a drastic change. So if I ever, you know, read up on this stuff, I'll like I'll make a tutorial on it. But I doubt I'll need to because I mean I, I don't really see I like this, you know. But there might be a better difference. I don't know. But yeah, I put AC on GI. Obviously, GI you need GI object glow and a sharpen filter at 15%. Uh, sometimes I go without the sharpen filter. It depends what I'm working with. 
Usually I wouldn't use a sharpen filter in, in, in this kind of uh, environment, but I'm just putting it on just to show you guys that it could be useful sometimes, especially for grungy and those sort of things. It makes it look a little bit more, has a little bit more clarity. So that's, uh, that's what sharpen does. So making lights. This is a very basic task. You just have to know what you want. So we're going to start off with going up here in a light panel. You have around, uh, this is for its, uh, you have seven different lights to choose from. We're going to be using light. That's it. We're just going to be using light for right now. Um, so you're going to uh, hook it up with some, you know, with some uh, position. So say you want your light to literally just be so general that it just sits there in, in the front. You just want you just want a general light that just sits there and illuminates the very front of your thing. That's fine. All you need is one light though. That's all you need is one light. You put that right there, and then you put the type to actually no, you keep it like that, and you just put the shadow to ray tracing hard. Or you can use soft. Ray tracing hard looks more realistic and nice, but ray tracing soft takes it, it eases rendering and in some cases can look better. But I'm not a fan of it. I think using Ray traced hard is a little bit more professional looking, you know, you know what I mean, feel. Um, but yeah, as you guys can tell, one light makes this look hideous. You know, it's crazy how much lights make a difference. You saw how good that looked when I had lights all over the place. So um, obviously that's not good enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually hook up with a light room. So usually what you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna wanna find where you want your shadowing. If you want a general, uh, frame to frame to object uh, illumination then you're gonna have a light all in front sometimes when you have your whole thing illuminated you'll have them on the sides the back and the front it's always a different situation so we're gonna start with positioning this so I always put my first light to the right so I'm gonna put it right there all right and then after that I'm gonna position it right there and I'm gonna copy and paste that, and I'm gonna put one right in front of it to the side. And I'm gonna move that one over here. And I use I use my grid, obviously. I use my grid as I. It's a great way to use cement, 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 cement. cement. Sorry, I, I never stutter like that in my life. Cement, cement. I give up. I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna say it. I. Anyway, I'm going to put my light right here so I can make it symmetrical. What's up, bitches? All right, I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to put one right over here. Now, I honestly don't even know if that makes a difference. I mean, it does make a difference, but not a big one. Because what happens is you just get the corners, even though it's very useless. But, I mean, it does make a difference, and that's what we want is a difference. So, yeah. I'm going to put that right there. And um, I kind of want to put that right there. So now if you look at this, you can obviously tell that you're going to have some sort of GI, which is what you're looking for when it comes to lights, obviously. You don't make lights without GI. Uh, so let's that render. One side's getting more bright. Over here is going to be a little bit more brighter than this because the lights are coming from this direction. But the shadow is going to be right here. Alright, we're not going to watch that render. No point. Um, next is we're going to copy all of these. And we're gonna press Control C and Control V, and we're gonna raise the roof, but we're going to move it in the middle. So I'm gonna go up here, my task thingy, viewer thingy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in the middle, fam, famo. Let's put that right there. All right, it's in the middle. <clears throat> All righty then. So that's right there. They're good. And we're gonna copy these ones down here again. So. We'll see. I don't even think we have to do that to be honest. All right, and we're gonna move it to the left, so that would be right there. There we go. I'm gonna get rid of the. Actually, I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna click the one that we moved. That's above our text. I'm gonna move it back and up. And this is going to be our um our light setup right now. So I'm gonna get all of our lights. I'm going to take off our shadowing and put it to none. And then I'm going to select this one, hold shift to select this one, and hold shift to select this one. I'm going to put that to shadow ray tracing hard, ray traced hard. And then I'm going to actually make one more light right now. 
and that's going to be a our, our area light now area lights are the same thing as these only highlights a certain amount and obviously you can you choose what you, how much you illuminate with this so we're gonna hook this up with a big uh, screen looking light so we're gonna do that um, and we're gonna move this back and I'll move this up and then I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit so like 20 and then I'm gonna put this to a ray traced soft and then we're going to make it a soft blue color this is just to match our material we got going on here so like right there I'm gonna put our intensity to 50 and we're gonna check that out mm. so let me render a view so I'll be back when this is finished rendering which should take me like a second so okay so I'm back with the render and as you can tell it looks super dope it looks really clean and it looks a lot better than it did when we didn't have lights so if you want you can say that I'm a light magician because I have a British accent and I can do really good light ups but I am one of the biggest fans of having amazing lighting and that's why you'll never catch me not having a good light setup well, I mean you would but that's because I'm really lazy so that's basic lightroom setup right there we're gonna go into depth a little bit tomorrow with uh, we're gonna do some physical maps um, I just love how that looks. It looks so official. But yeah, we're gonna group all of these right here. So right click and group objects. And we're going to put that down there. And we're going to turn this off. Alright, so turn that off. Next, I'm going to be showing you a physical renderer. So that's called. Not right there. What am I in there for? That's called a physical sky. Ooh, what can this be? So physical skies are basically real time lighting. So if we just go and render this right now, I'll explain why this is rendering. Oh, this is basically going to give you that lighting effect that you want for real life. So if you're doing a photo manipulation, this is the kind of lighting you're, you're going to want to use. You're also going to want to use a light from, for the sun and where that is for the render part. So you can actually have like a decent like, you know, down shadowing going on. But... For right now, I mean, this is this is legit. This is legit. This is as legit. This is legit. This is legit. This is this is as legit it can get when it comes to real life lighting in Cinema 4D, and it looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I wouldn't really want. I don't like how there's no shadows, obviously, but we're gonna fix that. But um, I mean, it does look cool. So I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit about this physical uh this physical thing. Oh, I can't. I can't see it. Physical sky, I can't believe I kind of say that. Um, so we can go to sky right here, and we have uh, we can put on a horizon line. We can take off the physical sky, so it's literally just like this. But I like keeping it on because it makes it look cool. It looks cool. Um, but with with the, felt, with the physical sky, you can actually make your own gradient color overlay. So if you have if you want to have like an orange kind of like moody feel that's like all chill and like ditto, you can. So like something like this. So now it looks like at the sunset. Holy shit. That's really orange. Um But yeah, it's pretty it's pretty dope. Um So uh, a little bit more about physical sky is you can obviously intensify all of this stuff. So you have intensity, how bright is it? You put that all the way up and you're gonna have one of the brightest scenes in the world. Or you can play with color warmth but there's basically orange appeal so like 5000 is going to be like intense but you can't like put it up that high because you know it doesn't let you but you got night intensity ratio basically it's so self-explanatory i don't even have to want to say it but it's what you want it's basically light physical light at night if you don't understand that as seen intensity that's basically as much intensity you can get reflected from the refraction of your material dithering i'm not positive what that is um and the rest of this stuff you don't have to mess with um unless you're planning on actually rendering the physical sky which makes no sense to me so i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna show you some stuff you can do with it just fun stuff you can have your sky clouds atmosphere on i mean i love playing with this thing it's so cool you can have fog or rainbow i mean you could literally you can like look, look, look at this cloud you're gonna get clouds you yeah, you can kind of see it. Look, I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, 
yeah uh what else can you do you can go to sun uh preview color you can make your sun blue because you're having a supernova um i don't even think i'll let you do that to be honest it's like, no it wouldn't make sense if i let you do that uh but you can mess around with all this stuff here you get shadows um of course i'm gonna use ray trace hard because i like it hard um the atmosphere can be self-explanatory it's basically what it's like it's your environment and that's physical sky so shadows there's a way to do shadows in physical sky but i'm not a fan of it so i'm not going to like i'm not, I'm not gonna like show you like how to do it because i don't like it but um i mean like it, there's a way to do it i just i don't like the way it turns it's the same exact way i just don't i don't know i just can't like i can't like it it's weird and what am i re why am i rendering this retard um sky sign no. all right uh so next we're gonna make sure we put on visible and renderer to the off to the big of and um so now we're gonna make a shadow just using a single light and that's gonna be our area light so basically you can make an area light and make it big and wherever you want your shadow to be extorted from you're gonna put your light so say you have a sun that's over there all right cool I usually actually yeah, we're not gonna use an area light for this so we're gonna click our light go to general put the type and put the to a spotlight and we're going to we're gonna put this up up and away but we're gonna make this bigger I don't know how big we just made that oh my god that's good um usually I don't use spotlights actually because but this is this sometimes turns out really good with suns it depends how big your scene is though because spotlights obviously only lay in a certain spot because that's you know that's, that's the pur sole purpose of spot right but um yeah we're gonna move this to up up and away because our sun would be in the sky so we're gonna click that right up there and then we're gonna rotate it yay all right so that would be right there but our sun's never right on our object right now so we're gonna move that <laughs> It's like a big cannon. All right, so that's gonna be right there, and we're going to move that over there, and move that back, and then move it down, and then move it back, and just make it make sure it's yeah, it's awful. All right, so there we go. So now we're going to put on our shadow, shadow, put on ray traced hard. There we go. We're gonna go in our camera and we're gonna render this out. So this is another way of lighting, obviously, it's a very, very cool way of lighting. I like this way of lighting because it looks so chill, calm, peaceful, and just like all together amazing. Hmm. I think I did something wrong. Down. All right, so there we go. We got a basic, very basic material. We got the very basic uh, physical sky. We got a light that is a spotlight. And we got a super clean looking render going on his ale. There's a little bit of refraction going on right there. I'll have to fix that. You did not see that. But it's been Jaden, guys. I hope you guys like this tutorial. I basically gave you three tutorials on lighting by now. This is two of one because, you know, I teach you how to use physical render and how to use, to be honest, real quick, if you're going to use a physical sky, go in your render settings and put this to physic hell. And that doesn't make a big difference, but physical and physical go hand to hand, obviously, right? Right? Am I right? Um, so you want to make sure you want to fix it. 
Anyway, back to the point. I'm going to be leaving now because it's the end of the video. But if you have any questions, comments, and or concerns, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll get to you as fast as possible. If you want to leave a like because I helped you, make sure you do. If you want to leave a dislike because I helped you, make sure you do that. If any Thing you want to ask me in private, you can PM me on Skype or you can find my Skype down below. It's Boom Fire Reduction, don't make fun of it because it's gay. And it's been Jaden, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Talk to you later. Bye.